Well, it's about a half hour from when I intended to start, but uh, that's not a problem. It's uh, 1.30 uh, in the afternoon on uh, Tuesday, September 1st. Uh, we are now officially in our back-to-school mode, uh, where things are starting to ramp up. Things are starting to get better. Uh, I'm working on... Uh, the media room and back, uh, as I said, the, the Firefox wasn't working properly. Uh, they've changed things, they've upgraded. I'm using the old version still. I was able to salvage that, but I'm working on a backup browser, uh, and everything seems to be going all right. Uh, it will take about a week or so to really get it working properly, to get the configuration right. This is the problem. All these things, even though it could be the same system side by side, they all require different configurations sometimes. One thing will have one problem here, one thing will have another problem there. And it's because the bugs that are in the system can appear to be so random that while you can get it working on average, there is an issue of trying to get it working uh, on each and every system. It's just the way the human body, right? You can prescribe a diet for one person in terms of how they're going to eat and what they're going to eat for one particular issue. But the thing is, you, you can't do it for all the issues. And the thing is, every time you do, there's always a consequence to the uh, decision. Uh, there are always, and this is the same thing with medications, there's always side effects. I mean, watch any medical commercial where, where, where advertising a drug and listen to the side effects <laughs> near the end. <laughs> and the thing is, this is the nature of uh, things that, 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 that is, when they get into complex systems, that... Um, there's rarely ever a what we we'll call a prescribed solution. In other words, there isn't one solidly nice solution. There are always issues. There are always things you have to watch. There are always there are always conditions that will make you feel, oh, I've done something wrong. I've missed something here. There's something that needs to be done more. Uh, this is always the case, and this is what pops up with with the the Tannerites. And he talks about some of his his particular problems and the things that go on that sort of are unattended during the day. And you're trying to give yourself a positive method. That, that this is the whole thing is to try to keep positive about this. You know, that, that he uses the phrase "you are worth it." That's his Yahweh thing. Uh, and the thing is. And he's, I'm probably he's pretty aware of the stuff that the, these positive affirmations don't always work. There are things in your life that are going to make you upset. There are trials in your life that are going to, going to make you upset. Uh, but this is part of being alive. Part of being alive, part of feeling alive is dealing with the problems and the struggles that you have in everyday life. And the more you want out of life, the worse it's going to get. Because nothing comes easy. Nothing. No, nobody is. <laughs> nobody has privilege. Uh, you watch some of these. Uh, I know people who are rich, very well off. They're not happy. Because what happens? They're all fighting over the money. And so one, there's one set of jealousy over there. One person's not speaking to another person over there, and they have all this drama. What's the drama about? It's about the money. Uh, sometimes kids will have a lot of stuff and a lot of toys, but the parents won't be around because they're too busy doing other things. And so this is this is kind of the nature of things. The nature of things for everybody is to struggle. Sorry about that. <laughs> and. This is not you were worth. This is not passing it off and saying, "Oh, I'm worth it." And don't worry about it. You do have to struggle. You have to get through these things. And one of the things I'm struggling working on here is keeping my kitchen in in a particular order. I can't show you all the kitchen because it's a mess. But then again, it's a working kitchen. I do cook on in here three meals a day. And this is one of the things that I showed you where I had a, a pot a pot with cookies, and what was in the pot was coffee. What it is, is this green, this uh, orange pot here, it's ceramic. Uh, and you can put Greek coffee in here, or Turkish coffee, or whatever, you know, with finely ground coffee, even espresso. Uh, put your sugar in, put the water in, put in the microwave for about six minutes, uh, three minutes at a time. 
depending on your microwave. And you get nice hot coffee. You stir it around and you can uh, dip your cookies in it. That's, that's, that's what the thing is for, you to dip your cookies in there. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is uh, the iced tea. I didn't have an, a batch brewing the other time, but uh, here we go. Here's the iced tea. I just put it on now. And if you notice, this is the ball that comes in. I had bought these, uh, these they have nice jellies that I like. Uh, they're made, rather than using gelatin, they use seaweed. It uses the thing called agar agar. And this is uh, just about a day. It's got another day to sit. And then it'll be ready uh, to pour out into a jug. Uh, so I've got, I've, got a, I've got a system here. I've got my kitchen set up uh, almost like a professional kitchen. Uh, I've got all the stations I need. And the thing is, I can produce food. And the thing is, if I had enough money and I wanted to, I could open up a little, you know, uh, in Japan, they have all these tiny little restaurants. This will be showing this is why I have Kauai Tea House. There are a ton of li little uh, tiny coffee shops and tea houses all over Japan, and they'd maybe seat four or five people. Uh, so the, the whole thing about this COVID thing about shrinking the m number of people, you, uh, I'm sure to say the uh, chronic gas thing, is, uh, you know... <laughs> You can create something that's successful because it doesn't have to be large. It doesn't have to have a large kitchen area. The thing is, the problem is you always have government in interference. So, Anyways, I've got to get on to some editing. I have to edit the video for t uh, that's going to go up today. Uh, we're about two, three weeks behind. Uh, let's see, it's September 1st, and we're doing, uh, we're doing August 4th, I think. Uh, so we're doing August 4th now. We're just a, uh, a couple days shy of a month behind. That's about four weeks. And that's what happens. Is that once you get sick, uh, I wasn't able to edit properly. There were some problems with the editing bay where I missed a day, or so, a day or two. And now we're a month behind. So I'll work to catch up. But uh, that has to be done on the weekends with a single day vlog. I'll post. Uh, so I'll be posting seven days a week. But I'll only be filming six days a week. And that gives me an opportunity to catch up. It shrinks the, uh, uh, the the distance on a weekly basis. But more is going up and more is, is coming out. Well, it's about 10 to 11 in the evening and I'm sitting outside once again. I had an amazing dinner with my parents, so my dad, my dad, my mom, and I will all take turns cooking, and so uh, my dad learned from his his mother, and, and my mom learned from her mom, and uh, I had a lot of aunts. I have a lot of aunts and uh, grandmothers in uh, my church, so I learned from them as well. Uh, and it's not you don't do it's not a recipe cooking. It's as you taste, as you go, uh, type of cooking, and so it gives you a little bit more of an adventure than uh, would it than you would if it was simply a cookbook. Uh, so there isn't a recipe necessarily to follow. You sort of uh, once you have enough practice, you go by the feel of what you're doing uh, uh, in order to sort of go, go to the next step. It allows you to then become more creative once you have the technique down. Uh, you can become we can become more creative and do more things than you would typically do. And this isn't the end of the, the vlog for the uh, first of September. This is sort of an interlude uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm waiting. Uh, uh, I have to do some gaming around 11. Within about 10, 15 minutes, I have to do some gaming. Uh, so I'm waiting for that because uh, that that's on on a specific time schedule so everything else adjusts to that and I've had my first full day today uh, it's definitely back to school and gaming is see nerd gaming is part of school gaming is part of the school because it requires an understanding of strategy and a commitment to focus uh, that you typically wouldn't have on what we'll call a, a, a point and shoot game 
this is uh, point and shoot had games have their own sense of accomplishment there but in terms of overall strategy and what you learn nerd gaming takes it a step further and makes it and makes it that, that the learning is part of the game uh, what you understand what you learn and then how you apply what you learn to other things uh, these are basically role-playing games you could take some of the strategies you do in the games and use them elsewhere in uh, other gaming or that, that again is nerd gaming it, it, there has there's a learning structure to it and you can take it from the, the, the nerd gaming can be fictional but the nerd gaming can also be be within the real world it's, it's called IRL and it's this is not live action role play in terms of your, it's being fiction but you can actually get involved in certain things uh, from the nerd gaming perspective from, from the perspective of RPG uh, role playing games and I've done that. I've, I, 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 uh, this is actually how Cyborg Alpha emerged. Cyborg Alpha emerged because they realized that in nerd gaming you can actually bring in reality. And so I went from a purely fictional character to, to something that was in the re, within the research uh, environment that uh, I'm in. And so you know, you, everyone knows about cybernetics. They, they know about robots and stuff like that. And, uh, some of the characters you can cosplay are cybernetists, and same thing for the you know costumes for for Halloween. People would, you know people would, on the internet would I'd talk to us ask and ask, uh, "Why are you going out for as Halloween?" As I'm going out for, as I'm going out as myself, or if I ever did go to an, an anime con, I'd go as myself. I said, "Well, why? Aren't you going to be in costume?" I am in costume. <laughs> I'm a cyberneticist, and they they began to understand that that you could take. The, uh, the the limited fantasy of of live action role play that this is the part of the nerd game and the scenarios and you can extend it into something more significant more real and this is the situation that has occurred here and but the thing is it's it's also pulled me back into the tween years into the middle middle school for life because a, a large chunk of what I'm doing has no uh, functional limit functional limit to it. In other words, there's infinite knowledge here, and because you have infinite knowledge, it doesn't ha matter how much you learn or how fast you learn it. Uh, there's oh, you're always still infinitely far behind. Uh, your, your your total distance that you've covered is not much, uh, because you still have an infinite distance left to go. And this is puts you right where you are in middle school, where the uh, middle schoolers have the potential. The tweens have the potential. They're, they are of infinite learning capacity at that particular point. And so this is what this is what creates me uh, uh, creates me an infinite tween, is because I've got that infinite capacity again. Uh, I haven't gone off to a specific definition. Um, I, I like it. I like I like being a tween again. I like having my stuffed animals and sort of seeing uh, how I can meet people. You know, younger people uh, who are my peers. I meet older people, but the older people, as soon as you start talking about certain things, they go, oh, you're talking about conspiracy theory. No, I'm not talking about conspiracy theory at all. Because conspiracy theory does cross into some of the stuff I do. But <laughs> and then it, it, what happens is that you get stuck in the conversation. I get stuck in the conversation because there's a lot of stuff I can't talk about. Uh, the, 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 when you get into the area of infinite knowledge, you're going to cross into a lot of areas that are designed to be... aren't there are enough powers that be in the real world who want the stuff kept secret that uh, you simply just don't discuss it. And so that's what you do is you don't discuss things. You There are ways you can get things out here and there every once in a while, but you have to be very careful with what you let out, how you let it out, and you know who sees and hears it. And so this is sort of the nature of things. Today, again, it's my first day of school because uh, I'm back to my 12-hour uh, days again, and that's kind of how things work out. Anyways, I'm enjoying myself sitting out here. I've got another you know, 10, 15 minutes left to do it. 10, 15 minutes left to go. And so I'm going to take it and then I'll probably go in and do some gaming. And I don't know what I'm going to do with the YouTube stroll just yet in terms of it's going to be the next thing. Or am I going to wait until after I take a sleep break and do it after there? I, I really don't have a sense on how I'm going to proceed from here on out.
Well, as things go, things are shifting again. It's uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And when I said before, you, you want to work on a project, you said five more minutes. Before you know five more minutes up, it's already uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That means you've been working all night. Well, kind of the same thing here. Kind of the same thing. And we're just ending the vlog for Tuesday. Tuesday was uh, uh, September 1st. Today is se se September 2nd. And we're just ending the vlog uh, for September 1st. And that's because the date just got away. And um, I did get my sleep break. But at the same time, as the, the, there's work that goes on in the sleep. So as, as work goes on, these sort of these explorations, these uh, other worlds, if you will. Uh, you have a tendency to go overtime because you want to finish things. And there is a finish to, 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 to the exploration. You can get to a point where you finish the exploration. And you can coordinate the dreams in such a way in terms of your understanding, in terms of how that you can have, you can have a dream, wake up, go back to the dream that you had before, continue it along, and then uh, as much as you need to in terms of getting whatever understanding you need to get out of it. Uh, a lot of times, it's not necessarily uh, 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 that you're going for a specific understanding that it's targeted, but rather in terms of the, the exploration, you're picking up information and, and, and basically information about the emotions uh, that maybe you didn't have before. And the information is prevented, prevent, oh, presented in, in the dream in a different manner than you would ever think it would be. But once you become aware of it, then you start seeing, okay, there is more information here than simply just emotion. Because emotion itself can actually carry information, so. But that is, this, this is uh, what makes uh, the schooling rather difficult is that the uh, it, it and, and vlogging, twenty uh, doing a standard vlog is difficult because it's not it's not a regular day. It's a twenty four seven day, and when things occur, it really depends on not myself, but whenever the event occurs. Uh, I've been chasing down information on different projects. This is it for a physical history. History has started already. Uh, there is a bit of mathematics that we've been sort of wrestling with. And uh, we could call it math science, math, math, math science. I don't know science, uh, science, technology, engineering, and uh, mathematics. Those core subjects there uh, have all begun. Uh, I've got uh, my electronics bench. I've got uh, the engineering bench for uh, coding, uh, more or less set up. These different things are starting to move along, and I'm doing more and more work on my on my YouTube stroll because again, that's an observational thing where you can observe people's behaviors. You can deserve, you know, understand why they come to the decisions they come to, how they behave the way they behave, uh, and a large chunk of time, once the camera has been there long enough, they act quite normally around the camera. In other words, the camera does not become an impediment or alter the behavior. Of the person while they're on camera because they're used to it already. It's only when the camera is sort of being first introduced you have these awkward behaviors because they're being watched, but after a while uh, there isn't a sort of consideration that the camera is necessarily around. So uh, that brings in a whole new shift in dynamics in terms of uh, uh, behavior. But anyways, uh, I haven't done the YouTube stroll yet. Uh, I am going to with the backup browser sometime later on today, but I don't know exactly when because I still have to do some gaming now. Uh, after I do some gaming, I have to come back and restart uh, uh, start uh, Tuesday's vlog. Today's vlog. Well, no. Today's Wednesday. Start Wednesday vlog. Start the vlog for the second. Uh, and then uh, I have other work to do, uh, bits and pieces that, that sort of need to be attended to. Uh, I fixed up the charging station for the scooter. I fixed up the seat uh, for the scooter, so the seat is properly back on the scooter again. One of the videos I found, and this is we have to be careful with some of the videos on, on YouTube. Some of them uh, uh, 
although they show the, uh, an assembly, doesn't necessarily mean the assembly is correct. Uh, I had watched a, uh, a, a video to assemble the seat uh, on the scooter, and the top part where the seat goes was put on backwards. I didn't realize it until I got on there. I uh, went and found another video and said, okay, I have to turn the seat around. And so that's what I did yesterday is uh, finish fixing the seat by turning the seat around. And it works much better. It's more stable. Uh, not necessarily more comfortable, but more stable. And so now uh, it's, it's, it's in its charging station. It's fully charged. So later on tonight, I can go out and start practicing uh, riding the scooter so I can learn how to get better at it. So I can t eventually take it on on. We can go on trips, actually. We can go on trips. With another, I'll be more mobile like that. So, And I do have a GoPro, so uh, we can take everything with us.